right guys it's me you know what i'm doing getting philly from work my eyes improving actually it's a little less red this is going down hopefully so we shall see what's going on later still have more antibiotics to take um this morning, I'm not sure what I'm going to have for, for breakfast. I'm either going to have yogurt or oatmeal. I really liked my oatmeal yesterday. It was pretty good. But oatmeal has so many carbs, but it's so, so good. Um, But anyway, I just thought I'd get on here and tell you guys what I'm doing and how I'm doing. Um, And I'll let y'all know what the rest of the day holds. Bye. All right, guys. This is our haul from Walmart this morning. We got the Great Value Stack Attack chips and the cheddar cheese. And we got the Lay's Stack Salt and Vinegar. And I got him to get me some almond milk, unsweetened vanilla. He got some pe pecan... Pecan swirl rolls, two diet twist, and some bread. I bought some bread two weeks ago, two loaves, and they both went bad. That's sad. Okay, off to fix him some breakfast and myself. Fixing this delicious tombstone pizza. Let's see. It's just a cheese pizza. Wee! I'm not having this, though. I'm going to have my oatmeal. That's what I feel like having. We'll see what it looks like when it comes out. I have a cup of oats, guys. I don't know where the saying is to tell you guys it's half a cup. But it's half a cup of oats. Put it in the pan. A cup of water. Turn your heat on. You hear my water in the background. Turn that stuff off. All right, now I'm cooking me some oatmeal. Good for the tummy. Okay, we're going to assemble my oatmeal this morning. Of course, I told y'all this is half a cup of oats and a whole cup of uh, water. Pour it into my bowl. Maybe it'll look better than it looked yesterday because yesterday it looked appealing. But it was good. Put that in the dishes. Then I'm going to take this. I'm going to put a half a cup of almond milk. Half a cup. Pour it in. Shut the top of this. Yes, little one packet of stevia. Shake it. Pour it all over. That's all. Put that away. Then take you a half a banana. Of course, if you're not a diabetic, you could probably have a whole banana. But because I am a diabetic, I only can have half. Probably shouldn't even have half, but I like a little flavor in my stuff. And you just cut it up. This one's very ripe, so it's very mushy. <laughs> yes, I don't mind. 
Hmm. Okay, throw that away. Wipe your hands off. Wipe off. And I like to add a little cinnamon because um, it helps with my sugar. I heard that cinnamon helps with sugar, so that's why we add the cinnamon. Plus, it's good. Some people add butter. I don't add butter to mine. Philip's granny adds butter, and I don't. I don't know if anybody else adds butter. It doesn't look great it's because of the cinnamon, but it is. It tastes good. Alright. Put that down there. I'm going to try to make it look good so y'all think it looks good. Put that in there. Now let's show you guys. There's the oatmeal. Bananas everything in it now i gotta fix my husband's which i've already started it but that's how you do my oatmeal and there's his pizza everybody it's delicious the tombstone okay i'm here with the oatmeal and I'm going to try it for you guys. And this is the water. And let's try some oatmeal that I know is good anyway. Just for you guys. Here's the oatmeal. So good. I told somebody, I don't know who it was, that I was going to explain to them about my trips to the hospital for five years. Mm. I'm not talking to you, sir. <laughs> but you can listen. <laughs> uh. <laughs> But I'm not going to explain it right now. I'm going to wait till Philip goes to bed. He knows my struggles that he's been there. But I will tell y'all the scares I've had for five years with doctors. And, and that's the reason why sometimes people lose faith in doctors. Because for one, they put you with a teaching facility. Knowing that you are very weak and not able for their crap um but they put you with a student without a teacher this is what i've been going through and this was i was going through that before i even met philip so i will be explaining that later today okay later all right guys this is what we're having for dinner barbecue chicken in the oven and corn on the cob and peas. Yep. Yum yum. There's my plate right here. That was Philip's plate y'all saw earlier. Hot and steamy. So, I told one of my viewers that I would explain my five years with doctors since I've had went through all these the cancer scares and everything and how doctors can actually scare you I mean they not only for your diagnosis but some of them put you with students and they really shouldn't if if you are someone that's really ill like really sick so me and my husband got married 
five years ago. And um, so after we got married, probably a little bit before we got married, we wanted to have a child. We've been talking about having a kid and we have been less fortunate. You know, we, we tried and tried and tried and I said, you know, it's probably something wrong with me because, you know, I'm always sick, you know. And plus I had the congestive heart, I have congestive heart failure. And I thought, well, maybe if I have that, maybe, you know, but my doctor, my heart doctor had confirmed that I could have a child, you know. So I was just like, okay. So something's got to be wrong in that problem area, you know. So I went to a clinic because I didn't have the money, the money to go to a doctor, you know. And I didn't, well, not really the money. I didn't have a doctor around my area because I was so new here. And so I went there and they checked me and they did my exam and they had found a cyst on my ovary that was worrisome to them. It was on my right ovary and they told me to go to a specialist. They recommended a specialist to me 30 minutes away from me, which was okay. I went there to see her. We were so confused about the area because I mean, we we almost murdered somebody trying to get there because we didn't know our way. But anyway, <laughs> which I mean is we almost run them over with our car. <laughs> but anyway, we got there. And we had, actually, we were there really early. And we had went into one building that was wrong. And then we had to walk you know, it was the other building was right beside of it, so we went there. Went to the other building, and we saw the, the doctor that was supposed to see me. Okay, I went through all these testings, and of course, um, they finally come back to me. This doctor they set me up with, the clinic set me up with, came back and said that I had a cyst on the ovary that was worrisome because it was big so they they scheduled me to have an ovary taken out my right ovary taken out so I'm going I went to see if I could have children and that's what I find out I have a cyst that could be cancerous so they were going to take it out and I found that out on Christmas the day of Christmas that I had a um cysts on the ovary so we scheduled to have the surgery and here's the funny part <laughs> the doctor that said that I had the cysts she didn't do the surgery she moved away and gave me to somebody else because she was then again a student <laughs> um Anyway, then we we had the surgery. My husband couldn't be there once again because he had to work. His job is very, very strict on work policies. And he, you know, he tried to get off, but he just couldn't. And he doesn't miss work that much. <sighs> anyway, sorry, my eyes itching. Um, so I had the surgery. My mom was there with me. And soon after that surgery, I found out I had um, sleep apnea. I found out that. But then they had taken my right ovary out. And they came back and the cyst was benign. Which, taking my right ovary out lessened me chance of getting pregnant. You know, made it harder for me to get pregnant again. So, but they did find out I had abnormal lymph nodes in my abdomen and in my neck. 
and chest area and they did find out I had lymphoma so I did have to go for cancer treatment I have been through probably 20 different doctors I'm just guessing because a lot of them are students and they leave you they you know what I'm saying they leave you and the actual doctor that's up under them you never see them you never see them so anyway I had that surgery got the ovary out and of course they set me up to have a port put in my port was right here and I had a port put in I have it out now because they didn't want to leave it in thinking that it could get infected because I have sugar they found that I had sugar during the uh, process saying that I needed chemo wonderful that was more medical stuff um then we went on with that we I had um, I had to do biopsies to see you know what kind of cancer I had what stage I had my stage was um, stage 3 lymphoma um, I had to do six rounds of chemo but it was very very rough chemo so it really really lowered my immune system badly so I catch everything and I still do it didn't get better um, but anyway we we went after that we after the six months was up well the six chemo treatments were up my mom my mom took me to three and then my husband took me to the other three um, came back and we retested and I was normal I didn't have the cancer anymore I was I was okay but the last two chemo treatments really took a toll on my body I would be sitting up talking to you and all of a sudden I would fall asleep it was rough um, so then again me and my husband we were still trying to have a child knowing that I had had the cancer and stuff and we were like you know it, you know if it happens it happens if it don't it don't so we ended up getting pregnant right after my last chemo treatment got pregnant we found out my last chemo treatment was in August of 2016 I think 2016 and I found out I was pregnant in 2017 of January my mom and my sister uh, kind of kept telling me you you don't look like yourself you know you look different so they made me take a test and I was pregnant I was so happy you know so then immediately I went to a clinic a place to you know test to see if I was pregnant you know la 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 and they came back you are pregnant and we were so happy we were shocked and they recommended us since I was a high-risk pregnancy to go to um, a clinic in this Roanoke so I went there they didn't have the tools to assist me in that clinic um, they didn't because I'm a bigger girl they needed somebody with better tools and stuff like that so uh, once again I'm getting the runaround um, then I go to the actual hospital and I don't know I think I was probably a couple months pregnant something like that they didn't tell me because they could you know they were having students run tests on me and not the actual doctor and knowing I was a high risk patient they did that so I was already scared because I know that there's a chance that you know with high risk pregnancy you could um you could die you know having this child you know you or a child could die so once again I'm up in there 
and the doctor saying laying down they're doing their exam and they're like we can't see the we see something but we don't know you know if it's alive that's what we were trying to figure out if it was alive or not so excuse me <sighs> we were trying to figure out if the baby was alive trying to get a heartbeat and they couldn't really find a heartbeat so what they did they sent me to they sent me home and brought me back like a couple days later a month a week later I think and they were trying it again and they really couldn't see anything <clears throat> but they the thing it is they had students doing it and the last girl that done this for me now I tell you I had my right ovary removed okay but she goes and tells me the student tells me that my right ovary is there and I'm like there's no way that your right ovary can grow back you know so that's why I knew that she was a dummy okay sorry she was a dummy they sent a student in there that did not know what she was doing she poked me very hard and after she did that I went home and I started bleeding but they say you know you bleed with the with the um one of those inner things they check your baby with you know in your you know hoo-ha mm -hmm. Well, I didn't think nothing of it because I was like, maybe, because she did poke me very hard. And I was like, because she was trying to see, you know. But still, that was, it was hardly poked. Anyway, we went and I was sitting there. I laid down. My stomach was hurting, but I didn't think nothing of it because I figured, you know, it was just something that happened, you know. Um, anyway... I was laying down. Philip got up to go to work. He went to work, and I noticed my I was bleeding worse, you know. And I got in the bathtub to, you know, because it was so it was so painful. I needed some heat, you know, something. So I called Philip to, immediately from work, and I told him, "Look, you have to get me to the hospital now." The hospital we had to drive to was 30 minutes away, so he had to come home. So he took me down there. I was bleeding very badly um, at that point. I had waited maybe six hours after I had went to the hospital and got checked. I didn't know anything was happening. So I went and I got there. They took me in almost immediately. And they were they took forever I mean I had I had destroyed their bed like five different sheets I know and my husband overheard a nurse which was a student nurse say that I wasn't bleeding that bad okay I went I was bleeding so bad I was it was everywhere okay and they had me go in there and I, they they checked me again and they kept telling me you know relax how can you relax when you're losing your baby you know anyway this was an, the actual doctor you know she was she come in because she was our second doctor and she she came in and she was just like um you're losing the baby and she said that's what it is you're having a miscarriage and instead of just accepting that I was um, having a miscarriage she had me lay down again for somebody else to check me again I was already in pain and I was already upset because I was losing the baby Philip was upset because this would be my first child and you know, we were very happy that we were going to have a baby. I got two tests 
if I can find them. I even kept them because, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys. This was the test that we took. It was positive. This means positive two line. I kept them both. I don't know where the other one is. It's in there somewhere. And I keep that to know that I was pregnant at one time. And I think about what if that baby had made it. And what I'm talking about doctors that send students in to work on people like me that is a high risk I just don't think they should do that because what if that girl that was a, a teaching they say you cannot sue them because they are teaching facility and it's in their contract but what if she had damaged it because she, the girl that poked me very hardly with that, um, the sonogram thing, she was a student. She was an older woman, and she said she saw my right ovary on the screen. You don't tell, if you don't know what it really is, you don't tell them that. But anyway... There was no teacher in the room with her, okay? So, I have been through so much medical stuff. And like I said, and you, you just don't send a student in to, help, to assist with a person that is ill, sick, you know, all the time. But anyway, um... Before I met Philip, I had I had found that I had psoriasis too, which this is what the red stuff is above my eyes. I found I had psoriasis, and then I went to this place, and it was like a two-hour drive for my mom to drive me there. And the doctor, of course, had some students with him, which. I didn't care at the time because I didn't know what was going on. He pretty much made me a laughing stock of those two girls. Because um, he said something about the back of my head and I had psoriasis and it was like, you know, gooey stuff out, running out of it. And I, you know, I wanted to know what it was so we could get it fixed. He immediately said, well, you have folds. My aunt says, what's folds? Folds are fat on the back of the head, okay? So he says, fat, you know, on the back of her head, blah, blah, blah. So the girls start laughing. It was immature. It was not professional. It was almost like he was trying to impress the girls. I don't know what his name was, but I was so glad to get out of there. I do, I mean, it, I have had some rude doctors, you know, but there was this one doctor, and he was not a teacher, he was a, he should have been a teacher, he was a good, good guy, Dr. Brown, and he was my heart doctor, and he, he made my doctor visits free, because I couldn't afford it, but he said any kind of tool he had to use outside of his his um, office would have to cost. He said, but whatever he could do in his office, he was going to try to keep it free for me. He actually cared about me. You don't get many doctors like that. Many, most doctors are just worried about a dollar. A dollar over your life. And a lot of people are like, no, 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 no. You got that all wrong. They don't, they don't worry about a dollar. Yes, they do. I know they got, um, they got, um, kids and people that need to eat, but the insurance that I have helps them. It pays the bill, okay? It pays most of it, and they're getting paid, but anyway, the, the point of this, this part of this video is to tell you guys that if you're, if you're very sick, like, I know that the, the students need to learn how to take care of stuff like mine but not on not on real 
sick, sick patients like me. Um, but I get all kinds of stuff. Like, if my nephew's sick and I go down there, I'm going to get his cold, whatever he has, because my immune system's very low. So that's my, my horror story of trying to figure out if I could have a child. I went to find out if I could have a child and found out I had cancer. And they thought it was the right ovary had cancer and then they found that I had cancer in my lymph nodes. And like I said, I've had different doctors. They move. I had one move to Maine and you know, it's like they switch off because they are students. Like I said, I know the students need to learn, but when you see a person's chart and it's like got a million different medical things on it, don't, do not send a student in there by their self anyway. I mean, who knows? I could have had that baby if, if, like I said, I think she did something because she didn't do it on purpose. But when she was trying to find a heartbeat, she really, really poked me hard. And I told her it hurt. She said, well, I got to do this. La, la, la. I don't think so. I think she just didn't know what she was doing. Because she's the same one that told me that, <laughs> that I still had my right ovary when it was taken out. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. And we all know what today is. Today is Walk With Me Wednesday. If you can't walk with us, you can do whatever you can do. And I'm going to think about doing Monday, maybe Muscle Monday, or maybe Moving Monday. So if you all want to join in on Moving Monday or Muscle Monday, either one, y'all go ahead and try. You can lift your little weights on Muscle Monday or you can either move on Monday just as long as you're moving it's enough about me why don't you guys put in the comments below um, something a, a scare that you've had or um, something that you've had experience with in, in the teaching facility of the hospital it's very scary when they send teachers the teaching students um and this I I was going to tell you I went to my primary care doctor which she is a student again and she told me it was a sty well it just kept closing and closing and my eye was like very close it's better now it's still got a little knot here but it's going down I still got antibiotics for that but still, it was just, it, it was horrible, you know. And then my eye was almost closed, and I went to the uh, clinic near my home, and he immediately said, this is not a sty. And he gave me what I thought I should have had was antibiotics. And if she had done it, it wouldn't have got this bad. But anyway... She had even asked a second opinion, which he looked very young, too, so. There you go again. Another teaching facility thing, a student. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop rambling. Y'all have a wonderful day.